Hey guys, it's holiday season and that is the theme of the build. I know it looks like I've got a gun on my table, but for me, this is the holidays because I'm about to build a Secret Santa gift for my Secret Santa user on the Imager. Um, I've been told he's a maker. I have decided to do a Nerf mod for him. And I procured what I think is the loveliest of the Nerf rifles, which is called the Long Strike. Look at this thing, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm gonna make it even prettier. I'm also going to upgrade the spring and the, uh, uh, the pump action to make it shoot longer and harder. Because what's the point of having a Nerf sniper rifle if you can't shoot a great distance? Um, we're gonna add all sorts of extra cool stuff to this. But first we're gonna take it apart. Here comes a Nerf mod. All right, now the first step um, is gonna be taking this apart. I'm gonna modify it and I need to paint it. So I'm gonna take it apart. But before I even do that, I'm going to tooth it up. I'm gonna be painting this. Uh, I don't want the paint to scrape off and it's brand new, not brand new, but it's injection molded plastic. So in order to help the plastic, the paint adhere to the plastic, I'm gonna hit it with some Scotch light, Scotch Bright. I can't talk this morning. And this is just to make sure that the big surfaces actually grab the primer when I paint it and hold on to the paint job. I'm actually going to be doing a fairly weathered paint job, um, which means that any kind of paint scraping away will actually work aesthetically with what's going on. But you know, it's also the base color is blue and orange and I want to go with slightly more badass black, yellow and uh, like charcoal silver, like a gun metal. I'm gonna paint the magazines. So I'm gonna be going slightly out of order here because I'm painting many things at once and I want things to, uh, to dry. So I'm gonna hit the magazine here uh, with some black paint because that's the first color that I actually know. There are a lot of screws <clears throat> in the Nerf long strike, long strike. Um, and they are not all the same size. So I'm gonna do a technique that I learned from Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which is to take them apart in an order that I can remember, i.e. in this case, it will be <clears throat> clockwise starting from top left. And then I place the screws in that order and I don't lose track of which one goes where. Another thing that I've done in this, along the same lines is this technique of lining the screws up clockwise from top left, is I've also drawn a picture of the thing I was taking apart. I just did a carburetor. So I drew a picture of the view of the carburetor that, with all the screws and I placed each one where it went on the carburetor. That was also very helpful. <clears throat> so just to, just to vindicate myself, I want to point out that there are one, two, three, four different sizes of screws, and you can see how many are around the outer perimeter of this thing. It's a lot. So uh, this will help me greatly in putting this thing back together later. Okay, this one whole piece, that's awesome. I am going to be modifying this with an upgrade kit. So I believe I'm gonna pull out the old mechanics so that I can do some painting on this before I put it back together. So uh, the, the upgrade kit that I'm working with that uh, puts a five or seven kilogram spring and extra uh, uh, chamber or bigger chamber for shooting uh, is made by Mod Works, by the way. Now that I've got a lot of the main pieces out, I'm gonna throw back two screws just to hold it together. And then I'm gonna give it some paint. 
Now, one of my key rhetorical flourishes on this is gonna be that it's largely yellow. So I'm gonna paint a few parts of this yellow. Oh, right, and I've got the front part, right? This also has to go on there. So I've gotta take this apart too to paint it. Here we go. How, uh, oh wow, seriously. Okay, so that's the top layer. This is the under layer. These would be yellow. And so will this, this, this will be all yellow at first. Right, right, yes, right. No yellow on this, but it'll be charcoal and black. Let me just double check that. All right, so what you may notice is that I'm doing this paint job in multiple thin coats and then using a lot of uh, the blow dryer to dry the coats. It's because um, I wanna get this done in one day. Two, it's actually really cold in the shop. It's about 50, 48 degrees in here. Um, and that makes paint dry very, very, very slowly. Uh, so in order to be able to get to finish this in a day, um, the blow dryer is helping me out tremendously. For a while, it's gonna look like a really crappy paint job until I start to do the final masking. I'm doing the broad strokes right now. Here's the first masking of the butt. All right, so uh, the yellow paint that I'm using as my main body color is uh, taking a little bit of time to set. So while I'm waiting for it to set, I'm gonna do some detail work on this front, uh, uh, the front barrel. I have also separately, while you guys weren't looking, I made a silencer front for the barrel. Um, and this I'm gonna continue to age and weather a little bit, but this is to give the uh, front of the barrel a little more like oomph, right? Yeah. Let's paint this tube silver, make it stand out a little bit. Um, this material I'm using right now is Rub and Buff. Uh, this is a metal powder infused wax that is made for rubbing and buffing, hence its name. Um, really what it is, is it allows you to add some metal accents to stuff. Um, you can buy it at the craft store. It, uh, it tends to, the way I'm using it, which is to rub it into the edge of a rag and then do effectively a kind of a dry brush gives really, really great detailing to stuff, but without looking clearly like paint, right? It just ends up kicking these extra details a little bit and making it look a little more worn and metallic around the edges. It's kind of a fantastic way to get a lot of value for a little bit of effort. Um, for instance, on this, I'm gonna add some, uh, some details that'll make it look as if it's worn metal. See that? Right there, all of a sudden, now it looks more like it's actually was made of metal and it's wearing down. Same thing there. See how the lines pop out? This is, and again, because this is a front of a gun, I'm gonna actually do it kind of like in the direction the gun points. Yeah, awesome. 
And again, don't ever get too regular with your paint job. Remember, regularity does not happen in nature. So, you, you, you know, it's easy to do a kind of a very regular coat on everything and then it looks too uniform. So you want to go in and kind of add a splotchy splotch here and there, you know, kind of a like, like bad things happen at that point. Okay, so watch what happens to the magazine. I hit it around its edges. Yeah, see that? All of a sudden, all this kind of narrative starts to unfold. It looks really more beat up. That's what I wanted. Like a piece of video game hardware. Mm hmm I mean, you know, within a video game, not to play a video game with. That's much more like it. Look at that. That's great. I'm very happy with that. And we can add a little more weathering around some of the key spots that it might be rubbing on. There we go. And it goes. And there are three screws that hold this one in. Right. And three. So there are these little doohickeys which hold on the scopes and stuff. That goes in one, and that one goes in over here. Time to pull some masking tape off of this. There we go. Just a little bit of masking adds so much value. I can't even overstate it. Just some sharp lines of color differentiation yields so much. I want to add some more details to this. I think very specifically, I want to start by painting this line silver. Oh, right. I've got a rifle sling for this, so I'm actually going to drill a hole for it here. Cool. I like how that looks. So now I'm going to add a little bit more rub and buff to bring out some of the detailing. All right. <sighs> now I've got the basic paint job for the front and the rear. It's time to uh, start moving towards the middle. I'm also going to give him a short magazine because I think that's going to work better with a couple of the details I want to add. So one of the techniques you might be seeing me using here is that of this uh, wooden skewer. The fact is, is that a wooden skewer makes an excellent, uh, an excellent little convincer for the masking to go down where you want it to go. Um, the other fact is, is that you can never have too many pokey or sticky things, and I mean sticky by sticks, uh, stick type things in your shop. There's just I use tongue depressors and skewers, mixing sticks, quarter inch dowels. Like every single one of those has different kind of applications and you know, like unique things that you're trying to do. So it's like every time you see a bunch of sticks, buy them. They're really good to have around. I know it seems like I'm spending a lot of time masking and frankly, it's because I am. In fact, when, uh, when I was working at ILM, the ILM paint booth was just nothing but a bunch of folks sitting around taping, using blow dryers and shooting the breeze. It's actually a really fun culture, um, but it's all about the masking and it's all about taking your time to mask the details so that you can pop the things that you want to pop. 
um, and to make sure you don't get any overspray. I'm going a little bit sloppy with this because I'm going to be able to hide some of my crimes with the weathering later, but um, it's still, I've been masking now for about 40 minutes on just this one part. But this is the main sort of color divide of this gun, which is the yellow casing and the rest will be black. Actually, what's going to end up happening is that most of this is gonna go charcoal with the gun butt being black, but the charcoal stuff that I've got dries really fast. So I'm gonna do that one uh, first and then the black paint on top of that. So. This is the last bit of uh, masking for this part. I've got um, three different colors of paint here, a lot of masking, a lot of time into this. I've got some black, I've got some charcoal, I've got some yellow, and you can see it doesn't look like anything special. But unwrapping a masking job is like freaking Christmas. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. I'm gonna start to do it even while my paint is still a little bit wet because that's the kind of impatient guy I am. But you'll start to get to see just how much detail is communicated by a few straight lines with masking. Like masking is, um, it's a high return proposition. You get a lot of bang for your buck. And again, I'm still only three hours into this build, two and a half hours into this build. So taking apart a Nerf gun and making it even cooler is uh, totally within the grasp of even the most average model maker. It's a great way to play around with weathering techniques and inexpensive mistakes. Many, many, many little pieces of tape. That's one of the things to know about masking is don't spend a lot of time worrying about like exactoing perfect lines. It's just many, many small pieces of tape gets you there. Oh yeah, starting to look like something. Very exciting stuff. Oh, that's the best when you can pick them all off at once, like a scab. All right, so there you go. That's some nice color balance between these multiple elements. Clearly there's still some more detailing that needs to be done. Um, but I'm really pleased with that so far. Okay. Now, if you're in a shop and you end up with a bundle of masking tape that you've just pulled off, it's really important that you throw it at someone across the shop. It's like a game. Don't do that. Maybe you should do that. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's see here. How do we, how do we like this? That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty all right. And okay, I think it's time to put this back together um, and uh, actually assemble it with the upgrade kit, which is what I'm about to do. All right, so I've put in the ModWorks upgrade kit with a five kilogram spring. I am now in the process of putting the screws back in in the order that I took them out. Um, and this is going fairly smoothly. Um, I'm very pleased with how uh, easy the kit was to put in. And again, 
Apparently it's quite a performance upgrade. We're about to find out. All right. Okay. That should be in. All right, so this is now an upgraded Nerf gun. It's mostly paint, good portion of the way painted. I'm just gonna test its operation. That sounds good. Oh, pull oh, that back. Put that in, load it. Ooh! <laughs> Hold on. Let's see, I'm gonna shoot your... <laughs> you should see the expression on Joey's face right now. Dude, that's really cool. Okay, awesome. That works. Awesome. That's great. Okay, cool. So I'm feeling good about this. Now, oh, right. Uh, let's just rearrange my stuff a little bit here. Let's see, I want to add some detailing to this. I'm actually going to add some more on this because I think it breaks it up nicely. Sometimes what colors you paint stuff is not nearly as important as where you put those colors. I want to break up the detail and add to it. Sometimes you can add just a little differential color and all of a sudden it'll make the thing that you're painting look far more complex than it actually is. I think it's time for a little bit of the rub and buff treatment. Yeah, look at that. That looks great. Cool. Ah, oh, so cool. The main components of our gun are painted. I'm going to assemble them. This is a cool one. And that, okay. So there is, it's looking darn good. Um, but I want this to be a beat up weathered uh, type of weapon. So I'm about to hit it with some of my favorite weathering techniques, which you know is the burnt umber and raw umber. Um, some regular water and some rubbing alcohol and my favorite painting tool, a rag and a chip brush. So here we go. Awesome. Oh, nice. All right, lads, here we go. Go a little bit of a little bit of rust around the edges. This is, weapon has been utilized. Good, yeah, awesome. The lighter colors are always a really important part of any weathering job. I've said this before, but there's no such thing as a single color of weathering. You always want more than one. And you wanna be judicious in your use of that second color, but even still, the little bit of extra brightness of that red makes the other stuff pop significantly. Look at that. Yeah, it's great. And I can go back in and darken it down later if I want to. Yeah. 
hit a spot really hard so that there's more variance. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Sometimes you get a tremendous amount out of just putting paint on and trying your best to wipe it back off again. Uh, I want darker now. This, personally, for me, the weathering, this is why I build stuff practically. I love this part more than almost any other because what happens is so cool and so quick. I mean, it really is like how much how much storytelling you can do about the object by hitting it with some color is just really exciting to me. <sighs> okay, now I'm adding a couple of lovely pieces to this build. One is going to be a real scope. Screw it, let's put a real scope on this thing. But we gotta beat it up a little bit, so I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of some weathering paint. And we'll also kick it with a little rub and buff. Fabulous. Cool. <laughs> it's kind of funny to look through a Nerf gun and look at a real scope profile. <laughs> it's, look at how pretty that thing is. All right, we're almost there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we've got a sling. I want to put that on there and I want to weather it too. Oh, we're not quite done yet though. We're not quite done. It's definitely a badass rifle. Let's see here. This goes in that way. Yeah, uh, one other aspect that I was going to add, here it comes. Let's see. Yep, I wanted to put in a bipod. Why not, I say, why not? There we go. Very nice of them to make the Picatinny rails of the Nerf rifle. Okay. All right, so that folds like that. Excellent. That. This, 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 this will genuinely get you into some real trouble, I think. Okay, so that lives like that. And then this could potentially live like that, like it's some kind of grenade launcher. Yeah, that actually also looks kind of badass. Okay, so. Dude, I think it's done. I am really, really pleased with that as a Nerf gun modification. Yeah, dude, that is, well, let's, let's have an inaugural firing, shall we? One round, send it home. Here we go. <laughs> the scope isn't that actually that far off. Not bad. All right, Anthony Johnson. My gun, my secret Santa gift to you, is headed your way. Happy nerfing.
One final detail I almost forgot. I would be remiss if I did not comply with the law of shipping artificial weapons that look real enough to get people into trouble. So I am putting an orange tip on this Nerf rifle. Anthony Johnson, as the proud owner of this Nerf gun, you are not to remove this orange tip. That keeps you in compliance with the law. Hey guys, this is Anthony. Um, just showing off Adam Savage's little Nerf blaster that he made me and uh, for Secret Santa, which is amazingly awesome. Um, just kind of shot it, test fired it in the house. Didn't really think much of it, but uh, you can kind of see what happened afterwards. Thanks, Adam. <laughs>